Hello and welcome to Ozpol Explained. I'm David and here is a story about why you should actually pay attention to your ballot. To set the scene, it's 1937. The Senate ballot back in this time period was not actually structured the same way it is now. Now you have like, that's the political party, that's the political party, here's the list of candidates, and where those parties are put from left to right is randomised. Back in the 30s though, everything was alphabetical order. Regardless of which political party you were part of, which, by the way, was not labelled, you would just have a list of names of candidates, and they would go from top to bottom alphabetically. So if your last name was Aardvark, you got the top position. So you can pretty easily know where this is going already. There were four Labour members, all of which had surnames starting with A. Amor, Armstrong, Arthur, and Ashley. And they were like, cool, sweet will appear at the top of the ballot. Now, of course, some of their campaigning definitely influenced it, but if you're the kind of person who is going to go donkey vote and doesn't really care, just go one, two, three, four, five, down from top to bottom, basically, that means that, well, Labour's going to get those votes in this instance. And lo and behold, they did. All four of those men won those seats. This was not particularly great for uh, a man named Arkins, who had been kicked out because of this election, and he was kind of annoyed that other people had chosen to run based off their surnames, which until then had been a big advantage for him. And he was like, hmm, this is like clearly a reason as to why we should reform elections, right? Yeah? But he'd just clearly been kicked out, so he couldn't actually introduce a Senate reform bill. But the Menzies government did actually agree with him and went, yeah, that that makes sense, we should change that. So they amended the Electoral Act in 1940 and now Senate positions to this day are randomly assigned by lot. And you're thinking, ah, oh, sweet, that's great. I'm so glad we saw a loophole in the electoral system and we fixed it, lickety split. For the Senate, do you wanna guess how long it took to fix that for the House of Representatives? 1983, they knew it was a problem for the Senate but didn't fix it for the House of Representatives for over 40 years. <sighs> if only I'd run for Parliament in the 30s, my name would have appeared pretty high up the ballot. But alas, my political dreams are crushed against the rocks by the waves of sensible electoral reform. And now ballots are clearly marked with political parties or independents and the name, and they are randomly assigned which order those groups are in to ensure that donkey voting does not lead to someone getting elected just because they happen to be conveniently named something starting with A. This was one of the many fun and weird stories that I unfortunately had to cut from my debut play, Extraordinary Ozpol, which is on at the Blue Room Theatre in Perth from 22nd of August to 9th of September this year. So if you want to know like what weird and wacky moments like managed to stay in the final cut of the play, you should just go buy a ticket. The link is in the description. That's right, this has been a play promo the whole time. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. You're going to hear so many weird and wacky and wild moments in Australia's political history. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is past September, whatever, that was just a fun story. Enjoy, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>